forget to leave that reflected light. Cross hatching is doing the same thing as this, but with different lines. Okay, so your darkest dark would be solid blue. Okay, it'll be almost a solid blue. Your lightest light would be white, so we're going to leave this box blank. The more lines I have here, the darker my value would be. These are hatching lines. Okay, so as I add more value, they'll get closer together and I would crisscross them. That's how we get cross hatching, because we're crossing the hatching lines. Okay, so again, they would get closer together. The more I do, the darker the value. So they would get closer together, and there would be more of them, and they would be closer, showing more value. Okay, now I went two directions in this one. So in this one, I'm going to go three. See how this value is much darker than that one, and darker than that one? Okay, so I have hatching lines, cross hatching lines, two directions, three in the last one. So in this one, I have four for my darkest value. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with this, only we're going to use cross hatching. Okay, so I can go ahead and draw where I want that line to be. Kind of pencil that in a little bit, just so I know where I want it to be. And for this one, I'm still going to, I think, well, I'll turn it a little bit. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to start out with my hatching lines. Okay, but down here, I'm going to continue to do more hatching lines. And the more hatching lines I get, the darker it's going to be. So I would keep going then different directions and I can keep adding them where I want them to be really, really dark. And get them to spread out a little bit. Okay, see how I'm getting it darker as it goes in that way? I'm going to go around this again to clean up this edge a little bit. Okay. Okay. So, the darker the value, and then for your shadow, you would draw your circle and again you would do your lines going across to get your darkest, your absolute darkest value which you want right up next to this. It would be almost a solid color, not quite because that would be coloring not using cross hatching. Okay, which is going to be similar with the next method that we use which is going to be stippling. So as I add more lines, that value is going to get darker and darker and darker. Okay, so it becomes almost a solid color. Okay, so then we have cross hatching. The last one that we are going to do is called stippling. Okay, and it is going to be dots. Um, let's see. Now, you can do cross hatching again with a pen if you want. That might, it might take a little bit more time. I think as I was thinking about it, I think it would be easier to do with marker. Just I think pen would take a long, long time. Um, stippling is going to be dots. So the more dots you have, the darker the value. Okay. And don't try to do this quickly. 
for two reasons. One, you'll smash the tip of the marker and you won't have a fine point to use for anything else. And two, it starts to get sloppy and you start to get lines instead of dots. Like as I go faster, I get dots. Okay, not, not lines. We want dots. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and if you hold it in one place, you can pick it up and go down kind of quickly. But I would want this one to have more dots than the one in front of it. Okay, and then this one would be, I'm just going to do a little corner of this because I don't want to take the whole video on just doing this one little box. But you get the idea. So they'd be really close together. That gives me a darker value. Okay? So it's going to be the same thing when I go to actually use the shape. I'm going to go ahead and outline the highlight and the reflected light. And I can go ahead and start on doing the dots along here and having them come together and spread out as I want a lighter value. So as I want a lighter value, I can put them farther apart. And then when I want a darker value, I can start to fill them in more. Okay, and shading can be used with all kinds of different materials. You can do shading with pencils, you can do shading with charcoal, you can do shading with oil pastels or chalk pastels. Um, shading can be done with paint of different varieties. There's all kinds of things that you can use shading with. Okay, you can do it with markers. I wouldn't recommend trying to do this kind of shading with a marker just because markers are more of a flat color and they don't really um, allow you to get that kind of shading with it. But anything that you can blend, like chalk pastels, oil pastels, or any of those types of media, charcoal, like I said, you can, you can do that with any of those that will allow you to blend them. Markers don't really blend. You can do shading with crayons for sure, colored pencils, very easily. So if you're wanting to add shading to something, I would recommend using one of those types of materials to do the actual shading shading. But you can add value. This is all called value. You can add value with different kinds of materials using different techniques. Okay, so if you want to use, let's say, ink or um, marker, you can do stippling or you can do cross-hatching and add value that way to your drawings. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of variety on how to add some dimension to your pictures using, like I said, either shading or cross-hatching or stippling. Any one of those can be used to add value to your pictures. Okay, and you do the same thing with the shadow on this one, but you would fill it in with dots. Okay. And that one would take a while, all right? But it does look really cool when it's finished. And again, I'll try to put some examples in there for you guys to look at. So anyway, hope you have fun with those.